Hi, welcome to the Lin Sun Show, or welcome back. My name is Lin Sun, I'm your host. Um, if this background looks familiar, it's because I am at work trying to do this video so that you have something to watch today, which is Tuesday. It's still January, so happy 2020. I hope everything's going your way. Um, if you'd like to help out our show, we are at patreon.com slash the Lin Sun Show. And if you want to check out our merch, we are at teespring.com slash stores slash the Lin Sun Show. Uh, this week we have my good friend Willie Mack on the show. You might be familiar with him um, because he's performed everywhere. He was on BET before, um, back in his heydays. <laughs> he's also a sweetheart. He's hilarious. He's a funny comedian. He is my co-producer for our Comedy Mavic show. So um, if you're in LA, come to our show January 18th, this Saturday in West Hollywood. Um, all the information is on our uh, Instagram. So stay tuned, have fun, and get to know Willie Mac. Bye. Hi, friends. Um, welcome to the Lin Sun Show. One of my favorite things about doing this show I, is I get to talk to my favorite people. And one of them is here with me today. This is Willie Mac, everybody. Yay. Hey. I'm wearing his shirt right here on my boob. <laughs> I love it. So, Willie, I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of his. Huge, huge fan since I first uh, saw him on the Laugh Factory clip. Ooh. Right? So I was a huge fan. And then I booked him for one of my comedy shows. Mm -hmm. Became an even bigger fan. And then I got to know him. And don't be fooled by all this. He's a sweetheart. Uh, Lily is a gentle soul. Wait. What, gentle no, soul. No, hold on. What do you mean, don't be fooled by all of likes, this? Because he likes, you know, Willie likes, you, you know, when I see, if I didn't talk to you, so here's the thing, ladies But they don't know that. Okay, so let me give you the backstory. If I didn't talk to him and I only saw him on stage, I would think, he's full of, him, of himself. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, oh, what a player, uh, you know, whatever. Wait. But no, well, hold now on. that I know him, he's not. He's a sweetheart. Well, I'm still a player. Don't take my oh, player, player card. Don't okay. take my he's player, player card away. He's still a player. He's still a player. Oh, now I need to know what part of my set makes you think that I give I off players. I think it's players. just, I don't think it's any joke. It's not a specific joke. It's more like the way you carry yourself, your demeanor, you know, your... It's not a bad thing. No, no, no. I just want. I'm curious. Okay. Uh, everybody else here is curious. Wants to know. So wants to wants know. To know. <laughs> because I haven't said anything yet. And then you go straight to. Don't be fooled. Don't be by fooled by what you by see. All this. <laughs> He's actually sweet. Like if I did something, it's like maybe you say that toward the end. If I did some like crazy. No, I just want you all to know. <laughs> right up the top. At the top. But okay, this is. You, you talk about this story a lot, but so we're just going to breeze through it because I want to ask other questions. So number one, you had a child when you were how old? 16. 16 years old. Yes. And your child is how old now? 17. 17 now. So yesterday you did that on stage and people were like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what do they, what's the reaction? Uh, I, I know people look at me and uh, they're thinking like how or like, mm -hmm. I, so that's why I tagged the joke with, the black don't crack because people try to sit there and figure out how old I am. Like that's the first thing everybody wants to know. <laughs> how old are you? How old were you? Yeah. And it's like, I, I love sometimes every once in a while I'll mess with them and be like, I was 12. They like, oh my God. <laughs> so, Is that possible? Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but uh -huh, no, so it's just, no, so yeah, I mean, I was a young dad, high school. <sighs> High school dad. Can you imagine? Dads nowadays who start at like 50 don't know what they're doing. So imagine <laughs> being in high school. So now you're, okay. Also, I just recently found out that you adopted a daughter, which I think is the sweetest thing in the world. Yes. Okay. So, tell, tell everybody about your adopted daughter. So my son's mom, I knocked up a lesbian. <laughs> and uh, she is apparently a stud. I can't say butch. That's... <laughs> That's no, no. They say the B word is like saying the N word what? to the L words. So. <laughs> okay. But so she's a stud. She's a stud. Uh -huh. And um, well, well, I don't remember what the question was. So tell us about how you adopted oh, how your I daughter. Adopted it. Mm -hmm. So I had sex with her. Obviously, I know how kids are made. She tried <laughs> me in twice. And both times she got knocked up. She's an awful L word, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so... The father, because the father is not in the little girl's life at mm -hmm. all. Okay. So, um, 
I so when she was four, she's fourteen now. Mm -hmm. She came up to me when she was four, and she was like, "Can you be my dad too?" Uh -huh. And I adopted her, and you know, I'm dad. She got my last name, uh -huh. and all that. Good news though, I don't have to pay child support on her though. <laughs> so, I was like, "Wait Goodness. a second, before we go too far, <laughs> I have to pay for this love." <laughs> Awesome. So you have two kids that are already in their teens. Already in their teens. So being a young dad, are you like a cool dad? Do they talk to you about everything and anything? I don't necessarily call that being a cool dad. Uh -huh. They don't respect me as a dad. <laughs> There's a difference. A cool dad is a dad that 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 uh <laughs> that's all that tries too hard to be like you're like oh your dad's cool like because he dresses cool or he they let you get away with stuff. Right, right. My kids will come up to me and be like. Hey, I'm about to tell you something. Don't tell mom because I might get in trouble. <laughs> and it's like, why not? Why can't you? Maybe I'll get you in trouble. They're like, shut up. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> but really, though, because you're so, because Willie is so like, even, you're like the one of the most even keel people I know. Mm. Even keel. Like, he doesn't, I can go ah, batshit crazy and Willie's like, all right, I'm just going to. We'll yeah. talk in five minutes, okay? Yeah. <laughs> like super will, even keel. Always, so you're like that with your kids? Yeah, I'm like that with them. Uh, okay. I, I'm a listener. Mm -hmm. Very observant. And it works with kids these days because kids go, they're going through more than what we could imagine going through because they got social media to worry about now. They got all this online stuff. Like if we, if we wanted to stop being bullied, we could move to a different school. Mm. And then, you know, start anew. Right, right, right. Nowadays, they're getting picked online and then they can Uber to where you live and <laughs> they, find out where you live. Yeah, on Google. It, it's so, it's <laughs> so, everything is so accessible. Uh -huh. And, uh, and that's good and bad because now they also have information. Like my son's mom told me I need to talk to Malcolm about the birds and the bees. Malcolm's already 17, don't you? Malcolm is already 17, and I didn't say this happened today. <laughs> oh. This was maybe like two years ago. Because my, my son went to an all-white school, uh -huh. and he's a tall, black guy. So, you know, it's already like, oh, my God, uh -huh. there's a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes after me. There's a diamond. <laughs> so, okay. so, uh, so I had to talk to him. I was like, Malcolm... I got to talk to you about the birds and the bees. He's like, ugh, fine, Dad. What you need to know? <laughs> it's like, I'm talking to you about it. <laughs> like, nah, I need, like, I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> or, it's, but, but they got, like, they watch, like, my son watches Big Mouth or, like, some of these things, like, those cartoons these days, like the worst we had was like Cat Dog, Our Real Monsters, mm -hmm. Freakazoid. Yeah, they got they got cartoons that are that are they, they make me squirm, I and mean, I've seen some stuff like I've. But yeah, my kids don't re they, they they don't respect me as a okay. father. Okay. So like my son asked me, um, that he asked me about what porn do I watch? <laughs> He's like, what do you watch, Dad? And I'm like, this is not a real conversation to have between <laughs> father and son. son. Hey, but it is. Yeah, but, but, but apparently. So what I want to know, though, is what recently or the, the biggest memory you have of your kids telling you something that they admire about you. What do they tell you? My son likes that I'm very resilient mm. and uh, I'm going after my dreams. Mm -hmm. And he said that. Like, he was like, I think that's pretty cool that you're doing that you like living broke so you can tell <laughs> jokes. <laughs> He's like, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I don't know how you like feeling poor. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> so he tells you you're like you're resilient. What yeah, about your daughter? Yeah, yeah, he likes that. Like he'll tell me like some craziness and I, I'm always quick to kind of like motivate him, give him some options and just like kind of talk to him through that. My daughter likes that, <laughs> that she has someone to call dad low key. Like mm. she don't say it, but... It's nice that she, I go see her friends. I go to her parent-teacher conferences. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, this is my uh -huh. dad. This is my dad. And people are like, no, that's not. I mean, no <laughs> I one... know what I'm saying. You're so young, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, some people do ask, and I just like, oh, nah. Long story. Yeah, Leah, long. <laughs> long story. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So now if see people... If people want to work with you, because you're super easy to work with, so if anyone wants to work with him or book him, he's easy. Um, but when I say easy, I mean easy to work with. But what do you look for when you're working with someone uh, in 
Right. Let's let's break it down. What do you look for when you look working with someone as in comedy, like stand up comedy producing? Producing. Like if someone booked you, yeah. The opposite of you. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I saw you. you was... Oh, We're producing shit. a show We're together. We're producing a show together. Come so. do the show, y'all. <laughs> Nah, I need someone that's the opposite of me, actually. Mm -hmm. That's um, structured, scheduled, because I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. I have great ideas, but most of them don't get, I don't get to because I'm overwhelmed. Mm. Like I'm doing stand up, I'm traveling, I'm going, I try to see my son and daughter mm -hmm. at least once a month, twice a month sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I do that drive there and I do some shows while I'm in Phoenix and I'll come back and I'm auditioning all day. Then I'm doing two or three mics a day, mm -hmm. I try to. And then on top of that, I do book, I'm filming, and then it's like. Right, so you miss ah, a couple of things. Yeah, okay. I miss a couple of things. Well, you're gonna get an assistant soon. Yeah, that's the plan. Or a little wifey or whatever. Yeah. Someone that'll just do How your schedule. You think a wifey is yeah. an assistant? Why not? If, no. Listen, if I was someone little wifey and I was like, yeah, I'll do your scheduling. It's just your schedule. It's not like she's getting you coffee and rubbing your feet. <laughs> I know Joe. Joe's really behind the scenes. Is wifey an assistant? She could be. No, I didn't your think so. Your wifey's not your assistant? No, I, can't, I would be. Yeah. yeah. I can't imagine asking my wifey to, hey, I need you to schedule my life and then on top of that, I don't necessarily need her. What if what what I'm, if trying, I'm to trying to say is, what if she go, what if I'm trying to cheat? <laughs> what if her, she was like, hey, you need help with your, I'll, I'll do your schedule. What if she offered? Would you rather just keep it separate? You'd rather keep yeah, it I'd separate? I'd rather keep it separate. Okay. Yeah, you, okay. you, like Biggie said, money and blood don't mix like two dicks, but that's, that was in the 90s. Money and so blood was, don't mix like, did you make that up yourself? No, no, Biggie Small said it in one of his songs. <laughs> okay. Y'all don't know who Biggie Small is. <laughs> Two more questions. Um, you do motivational speaking, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, tell us what your what you talk about in your motivation. Like, is there a theme, or do you just talk about what's needed in the crowd at the moment? I like, talk to the audience about staying in their own race. Don't date outside your race, because this. Are you serious? Is, yes. <laughs> I am a black supremacist. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> a black <Got> supremacist. <laughs> If I only had to Black date, power. date no. only within your own race, if I only dated, had to date Asian uh, men, I would be single forever. I mean, you've been single forever. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, you okay. that one up for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, perfect. I was like, can I set him up? <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. Uh, what is your motive? Do you, so you still do? Can we still? Can people still book you yes. for motivational people speaking? Book okay. No, I, I talk a lot about. Um, well, again, like even when I talk to my son, it's about resiliency because there was a time where I was famous, uh, mm -hmm. and then I lost it all. Then I lost my teeth. I lost my money. I became home. You knew that, right? I didn't know you lost your teeth. I mean, I heard from the podcast you did. Yeah. Oh, you're so cute. Is it? I guess. <laughs> but uh, uh -huh. so I've gone through a lot of stuff. And even as a, as a youngin, I mean, I had a kid and it's like uh -huh. everything that's happened in my life was had me set up to fail. If anybody knew that I quit, if I went back home, everybody would understand. Mm. They're like, dang, what? Golly. <laughs> and it's like, we get it. Come on back. Open arms. But I know what I want to do. I know what it takes i mm -hmm. guess and then i'm following a passion versus a lot of comedians are like all right i'm gonna give it three years and see mm. what happens i'm gonna give it uh it's been eight years and I've, i haven't booked the blah 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 since right. or but when you are doing it as a passion it's 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 uh it's not it, that's what kind of drives me is just doing it for the fun of it even if i wasn't getting like when i forgot my first check in stand-up it was. It felt amazing, but I would have done it for free. Mm, like right, the, all yeah. the traveling and all the stuff that I'm doing, yeah. I, did, I would do it completely for free. Yes. Just because I enjoy it, just to see that person, <gasps> or those people <laughs> laugh, or those right. people like, how old is yeah. Joe Flanders? Yeah. Like, and, but you know, but you know what? It shows when you're on stage. Like it totally shows that you love it and yeah. you're doing it because you love it. You yeah. know. Yeah. 
Yay! So last question. What is your definition of a good friend? Oh, God, not me. I, I, I'm gonna tell you that. I'm an all right friend. I'm like, I'm the friend that you would, you probably wouldn't invite to a wedding. Why but not? if I was there, you would not be mad. Like, <laughs> Why? What do you mean? Like, because, what's your definition I, of a good because friend? Because I, mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate, I'm a, I'm a loner. That, oh, so that's yeah. what messes friendships up for okay. me. People invite me places and I'm always turning them down. I'm kind of quiet. And I'm just there. You couldn't tell by this interview, but <laughs> yeah, they, it's an interview. That's different. Like I went to like Eddie Murphy's uh, bowling party, uh -huh. and Eddie was just sitting there by himself yeah. the entire time. A lot of people expected him to be Eddie life, Murphy, yeah, but he's not. He's just he's just here. Like even now, he's like making music in a studio somewhere that we will probably never hear. <laughs> but my, uh, so definition and what a good friend is for me. It's somebody that understands my personality and adapts to it. Because mm. I get some friends that hit me up. They'll be like, I haven't talked to you in, 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 in weeks, Willie. I'm just trying to say hello, stranger. It's like, don't do all that. You know, mm. I'm, I'm, my mindset right. right now is somewhere else. It's like I, I appreciate a good friendship, but my life doesn't allow me to cultivate and water and give sun to a friendship because I have to be focused on stand up, stand up, writing, writing. Willie, can you, let's go out. Not right now. Maybe mm. give me, give me some time. Hey, Willie, let's go. Hey, we're going to the beach. Um, hit me up next week. Cause I'm going to try to fly out to Dallas to try to get on this show and do five minutes. Hey, Willie, <laughs> so, and, and I do that. Right, right. Yeah. And so it's like my, I need someone to be like, Hey, Willie, whenever you get a chance, you know, I got brought some, like, I got a friend that's like that. He's coming to, uh, we're going to probably hang out uh, later on, um, but he'll be like, hey, when you got a ch chance, I bought some this. Hey, let's do something. I'm like, all right, right, cool. I got some time. And he understands if it's been weeks, a month, if it's two days, it's right. understanding which makes good friendships. So just know that just because you're not always talking to someone doesn't mean you don't care. Yeah. Right. You just pick up where you left off. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of uh -huh. what that is. Aw, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, aw. <laughs> I have to are pretend you? like I like hugging you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> okay, my turn. <laughs> Today, what is one of your most uh, proud personal achievements that you have accomplished? Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Surviving three years as a mom. Surviving three, three years? Three years as a mom. Because parenting, you know, is mm -hmm. fucking hard. And I will say this in every single episode. <laughs> but I survived. I made it three years. My son's doing fine. He's thriving. He's healthy. So Man. for me to accomplish that, I used to be a selfish little asshole. Still am a little bit. I was about to say, you still... Just a, just a <laughs> I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still a little selfish. So but what's the hardest part? Of parenting? Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, besides no sleep, is that wondering if you're fucking up all the time. That's hard. Like, I'm always wondering, like, I'll be here, but I can't just relax and be here. Like, my mind is at, my son's at his babysitter's place. Am I being a bad mom? Am I being too selfish? You know, we go through, I go through stuff, that kind of conversation in my head. The thing that I have learned about kids mm -hmm. is accepting that you're going to mess up a lot. No one's a good parent, no matter how many of these parenting classes you take, how many books you've read. Yeah. Your kid is only going to be your kid. And it's when they like when they <laughs> they tell you like how to punish a child mm. or whatever. There's like, no one way to do no it. There's no one way to do it. Mm -mm. Now, I I tried to spank my son once and I felt awful. And uh Cause he was acting up and I was like, knock him quick. I was, Go to timeout. Like I, I did everything the white people told me to do. And I was like, none of this works. Yeah. So I tried to spank him and it felt, felt weird to tell him, yeah. get in this room and put those pants down. Let's see that, <laughs> see that ass. Did you really spank him though? No, I gave him like a tap on the thigh and it's like, get out of here. And I cried myself. I was like, what did I do? I I'm know. a monster. Yeah, I agree. Yes, yes. But there yeah. is no one way. I tell my son to go time out and he's like, all right. Yeah. It, don't, it doesn't do anything for him. It's it not doesn't. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be a lot of rough ones. And then you're going to do a lot of things to try to, to, to uh, what's the word? To cut corners? 
Every day. Every time. <laughs> Every day I try to cut corners. I was bad at cutting corners. <laughs> I, I, like I, I, that was real when I talk about it in my stand-up. Like I used to put Z Quill in my son's <laughs> Z Quill? It's all bootleg day quill. <laughs> nah, Z Quill because he was I, okay. So <laughs> Yeah, uh, like did you really do that so yeah, that he can I really sleep? Did it. So, oh, not shit. so he can sleep, so he can leave me alone. <laughs> like, it'll be it'll be noon. I'm like, hey, man, you want some oranges? <laughs> He's like, no, no I can't <laughs> put, put the orange juice. Ah, oh, right. shit. Uh -huh. How would you describe your own working style? Huh? My own working style? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised you're asking me this because Willie, of all people, knows my working style. <laughs> Yes, I do. But. <laughs> so this Joe, but okay. So my personal working style, I um, I'm very much a go getter. Mm -hmm. If you give me an idea and I like it, I'm gonna run with it, and I'm gonna blow up your phone. So if you decide that you want to work with me, I will blow up your phone <laughs> with questions, <laughs> with ideas. Yeah, yep. it'd be like booty call hours. <laughs> it'd be like three in the morning. I'd yep. be like, Joe, yep. what do you think of this? <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I will blow up your phone because you know what I. I don't do one. I'm, I'm not the type to be like, oh, this is a great idea. And then let's wait two years to get it together. I know sometimes it takes a while, but typically I like to get things rolling and integrity. So mm. you follow through, be your word. All do right. what you say you're going to do, you know? Yeah. And have fun. If ah. it stop, when it stops being fun, stop doing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are three words you would use to describe your ideal mate. My ideal mate. Um, stylish. Uh, supportive. <sighs> he thinks I'm talking about him. He thinks I'm <laughs> stylish, supportive, and uh, has a fro on his head. Oh <laughs> my god! I knew it. I knew no. it. <laughs> stylish, supportive, and um, oh, integrity. Mm. Integrity is a big thing for me because I didn't always have it. So now that I've learned to cultivate it and know how important it is, it's important for me to be with someone who is committed and does what he says and follows through. Don't lie to me. I hate that shit. Yeah, I mean, no one necessarily likes being lied to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, that's, I understand that. Yay! Thank you. Tell everybody how, where they can find you on social media. You all can find me on uh Everywhere, Willie Mac, W I L L I E M A C C, and you can get Willie Mac socks. Willie Mac if socks. You want Willie Mac shirt? <laughs> all of it, all of it. Okay, thank you. See you later. Go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show, Willie. Uh, I have such a soft spot for him. He's like my brother, you know. Like I can't stand him, but I love him at the same time. Um, come see more of us. We, have, we are producing a show called Comedy Mavericks. Um, all the information is on our Instagram. It's in West Hollywood this Saturday, uh, January 18th. So we'll see you there. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video. I appreciate every single one of you. And I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.